So last night I was watching uh, Channel 4. I don't really watch TV, but if I'm around at my folks' place or um, if I come across it on in a cafe or restaurant, it's quite interesting to watch, you know, what people are watching. And um, as I say, it's, I'm quite unplugged from the TV. I'm certainly not in tune with what they promote. So it can be quite a shock for me sometimes to watch something like Coronation Street and notice that it's nothing but homosexuals now and um, extremely diverse in comparison to what I would watch 20, 30 years ago. But last night there was a, a TV programme on called Haunted and it really shows, although it's, it's done in a, a much more friendly sort of manner, it's not an aggressive manner, but basically these contestants are sort of released. It's a bit like Running Man to be fair. Yeah, I've only just thought about it. It's very similar to the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Running Man, where contestants are released out into the um, out into the country, and they're then hunted down. Um, but it shows you the extremely saturated network of surveillance that the government has access to, and it was quite a telling, quite a dystopian scene where there's these two uh, two black lads who are, who are the hunters all dressed up in black, both big lads, and they're in a Range Rover chasing down this one white lad in one particular scene. Um, it's just bizarre, isn't it? You, you know, you've got two African lads chasing down a European lad up in Britain, in Northwest Europe. And at the minute, it's a TV show, it's nice, it's friendly, but you know what, the, pub, the public, I don't know, could, would they enjoy seeing violence? You know, could it actually descend into an actual running man? Uh, type scenario and I think it's a bit of a warning really um, this this network of surveillance that the government's got because the government as we know um, enjoy the little power trips like they had four years ago so at the moment it might be a bit of a joke but in the near future say Hamza Yusuf and all the migrants in the hotels who might turn out to actually be soldiers get deployed on the streets there's enough auditors I've seen who go around filming these places and and they're being given bikes. So say if you have motocross bikes, tra chase you across fields. So say for example in, in the near future if you don't take part in another procedure that comes around or like up in Scotland with Hamza Yusuf where you say the wrong thing and it becomes more and more totalitarian and he, you know you can have more and more hate speech laws and etc and uh, with this high-tech mass surveillance state that, that we've got now you could quite easily be chased down couldn't you and um, well I'm probably looking at a bit too much of a grim future maybe it won't get to that point but there's always that possibility now you know if you had been in London in 1948 and you had have said that the Windrush generation that were turning up would one day be the majority in London, you would have been called a conspiracy theorist. And uh, if you had said that one day they'll be in the driving seat, well, nowadays you've got Rishi Sunak, Hamza Yousaf, uh, Leo Varadkar in Ireland, that black Welsh uh, first minister. So obviously, again, you would have been called a conspiracy theorist, but now obviously it's been proven right. So perhaps uh, questioning things is very important and um, so that's why I'm making this video now. Uh, it's my own observations, it's my own intuition, my own instincts that it just doesn't feel right. Um, but in between the adverts, on the adverts, you had the 1984 audio book being promoted which has reached its 40th, um, what would it be? It's his 40th anniversary since the first entry date of uh, Winston Smith's diary, you know, 4th of April 1984. And of course it'll be 76 years roughly since that book was wrote, so last year was actually a bigger year, 75 years on. Um, but yeah, so uh, fully enough, George Orwell with his um, predictions on technology, well it weren't predictions, I'm sure he probably knew what was coming, I think he didn't agree with it. And it was meant as a warning to us. Obviously, people don't pay attention, but then again, it's a very famous book, and people still use it. But the term Orwellian, Orwellian times. I'd say out of the dystopian visions of the future, though, Aldous Huxley was probably more correct with Brave New World. 
uh, I'd say we're much closer to that. Um, the thing is, Brave New World with all its technology, uh, that had to come in first because, and also to soften everybody up, get them away from Christianity, which warns of these times that we're going to be living in. Um, obviously, disperses the moral foundations of that religion and that mindset. And uh, that was the original intention to get people in nightclubs, get people drinking themselves to death, sometimes literally. Um, yeah, so that was the initial Brave New World and also uh, promiscuity and obviously as a result you've got um, broken up families now which leads to broken up communities. The multicultural aspect of loving each other, it's a false love though because naturally people end up segregating themselves anyway. So you end up like a mini world within the UK as opposed to the world being spread across the world. Um, these are all things that came in during the Brave New World period that the boomers lived in, you know, the flashing lights, the concerts, and obviously that, like, that still exists, but the, the problem is now, post-2020, we know this is uh, that final bit before the sun sets, um, and then we really do go into 1984. As I say, all the technology is already in place, all the cameras, all the surveillance network, the internet, uh, available in all towns and cities at any time, so a sophisticated Wi-Fi network. Um, Robots are actually becoming a rea reality now. These were all Brave New World sort of themed inventions uh, presented in a jolly, sedated sort of state. Um, but now, obviously, the tide's turning and we're seeing the Orwellian side of these inventions. Yeah, so it was just a funny observation um, to have all that surveillance technology being presented in Hunters, really just running man. Um, and then not, not, not so far after, you've got 1984 adverts in between. Um, and finally, when that was all over, when Hunters was over, Gogglebox came on. I don't know if anyone's watched that, but that to me just sums up how we've got in this mess. Um, too many people sat on their asses, nice and cosy watching uh, drivel on the TV being programmed by programs. And it's the end result of how we've got here, really. Because of things like uh, Gogglebox, the Gogglebox culture, should we call it. Um, that's my take on it all, anyway. Cheers.